Section 1.2 titled Functions and Their Properties. We'll begin this section by defining a function, uh, talking about what a function is, how can we determine if what we have is a function. Uh, we're going to discuss the domain and range of functions. And then we're going to talk about different types, uh, different sorts of characteristics functions have. Um, continuity, extreme values, symmetry, asymptotes, um, in behavior, um, a whole lot of different things we're going to go over, just kind of brushing the surface on uh, in this particular section. Uh, all things that we'll come back to in more depth later on in the course. So first, what is a function? Well, we can define a function to be this. So a function is a relation in which each element of the domain maps to exactly one element of the range. In other words, every x can have only one y. Each x gets one y. Simple enough. So how about we look at a mapping diagram of a function and not a function, just to kind of compare and contrast the differences between the two. Um, so let's say over here, the example that is a function, let's say that this x value maps to that y value. In other words, x1 comma y1 is a point on the function. Let's say x2 maps to y2, let's say x3 maps to y3, and let's say x4 maps to y3. That is a function because every x over here goes to only one y. It doesn't matter that these two x's here point to the same y. What matters is that this x points to one y value and this x points to one y value. Okay. On the other hand, let's check this one here. Let's just say x1 goes to y1 x2 to y2, x3 goes to y3, and so forth, x4 goes to y4. Right now, as it's drawn, this is a function. Um, but let's say that x1 also goes to y3. This is not a function now because x1 has two y values. Okay. So every x has one y, it's a function. If a single x has more than one y, it's not a function. Now a mapping diagram is just one way to determine if you have a function or not have a function. Another way is to do a vertical line test. Uh, a vertical line test is a nice visual test for dealing with functions. What you do is you take a vertical line you know, say you take this vertical line here and what you're going to do is, and I can't pick it up and move it, but let's, let's just use the pin here uh, you take this vertical line and you sweep it back and forth through the graph Okay. Um, in order for it to be a function the vertical line can never hit the graph more than once Okay. Um, this vertical line would never touch the graph more than once as it goes from left to right. Okay, so this is a function. On the other hand, if I were to take a vertical line over here, and I sweep it through left and right, well, we can see there are a lot of places on this particular graph where the vertical line hits the graph more than once. It's right here, it's right there, it's right here. So what we can see is this particular x value maps to a y1, a y2, a y3. This particular x has three y values. So this is not a function. Next we're going to talk about domain and range. Uh, 
Now, if you remember back to one of the appendix sections, uh, we talked about domain of algebraic expressions, and that translates very nicely to finding domain of algebraic functions. Um, one of the two things that we said caused a problem in domain were square roots. Um, this particular function has a square root. Um, now, we know that over real numbers, Uh, we cannot square root a negative number. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is take this part right here, the x plus 4, which is under the square root, and say that that x plus 4 must be greater than or equal to 0. In other words, it can be negative. Okay. Um, if I solve this for x, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. x is our domain, so we've just essentially found the domain. Uh, the domain for this function are all x is greater than or equal to negative 4, or preferably negative 4 to infinity. In other words, x cannot be anything smaller than negative 4. Um, for instance, negative 5 for x, negative 5 plus 4 would be negative 1. We cannot square root the negative 1. Okay, so negative 4 is the smallest value that we can use. Now for the range, we're going to use a graph. And right now, since we haven't studied the graphs in huge detail this year, uh, we're going to use the graphing calculator. So what I did is I went to the y equals screen, I typed in the square root of x plus 4. We hit graph. And sure enough, we can verify from our graph that it starts at negative 4 on the x and it goes bigger than negative 4. Okay? Now let's use the picture to determine the range, the y values. We can see that the smallest y value right here is at 0. And then the graph starts to go up from there. So that's going to be our range. Our range is 0 to infinity. So typically the domain, we've got algebraic ways to do it. We can confirm with the graph. Uh, the range, we pretty much just use the graph all the time to do that. In the next problem, Again, finding domain and range, we again begin with this square root piece on top, maybe. And because there's an x underneath the square root, we know that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Can't do negative numbers. Okay. Now, there's another problem inherent with this function, and that is the, the fraction. We have to be aware of any value that might cause us to divide by 0. Okay. So mental math can solve this, and everybody's capable. What number minus 3 would make the denominator be 0? And the answer is 3. And so from the denominator here, we see that x cannot be 3. Okay. So this, an in interval notation, would be 0 comma infinity. Um, but we have to exclude... We have to exclude the 3. This includes the 3. So I would write my domain this way. I would say that it is 0 to 3. The rounded bracket means that we're not going to include it. And 3 to infinity. So now we're going 0 to infinity, but we are breaking at 3. We're not including at 3. Next, what we'd like to do is find the range. And for the range, we're going to again look at a graph. Um, I went ahead and typed in the function. Notice there's parentheses behind the divide symbol so that the x and the minus 3 are in the denominator. Um, and when I look at this, I'm looking vertically for the range. Um, it appears that there is a y value right in the middle of these two curves that is excluded from the range. And it should be pretty apparent that that y value we're excluding is zero.
Um, so that's how I'm going to write my range is all y values because it went down and it went up. So it's going to be all y values except the zero. So that's going to be negative infinity to zero and zero to positive infinity. In other words, it goes below the x-axis, goes above the x-axis, but it doesn't ever touch the x-axis. It never is zero. I'd like to do one more domain and range problem, and one that's just kind of an interesting problem. We said that domain can be restricted by really two things that cause concern. One are square roots, the other is uh, division. Um, there is another thing that we need to look for, and that is typically um, when we're doing application modeling type problems, um, there's sometimes a domain inherent in the problem that we have to consider. Uh, for instance, if you look at this particular function, uh, or this particular formula, we should be able to recognize that this formula finds the volume of a sphere. Now notice, uh, so here, the r is like the x, it's the independent variable, the v is like the y, so v of r is kind of like f of x. Um, notice that the r here has no square root above it, has no divide, and we're not dividing by any r's. So th the two cases we had prior to this wouldn't really apply here, yet that still doesn't mean that r can be everything. Okay, if we're talking about volume of a sphere, okay, we have a sphere. And a sphere has a radius. Um, the radius can't take on every value. Uh, in fact, the radius could only take on positive values. Um, radius couldn't be zero. If the radius was zero, we'd have no sphere. And it wouldn't make any sense to have a negative radius. Um, so sometimes domain can be restricted um, by the context of the problem. Here I would consider the domain to be zero to infinity. Um, Again, can't be equal to zero because there's no sphere, can't be negative because that wouldn't make any sense to have a negative length on the radius. So the domain's got to be some positive number, zero to infinity. The range also has to just make sense in the context of the problem. Um, the range, the y values, the y values are the volume values. We could never have a negative volume. Uh, we couldn't have no volume. So the range is going to be also zero to infinity. And so this is a, an example where the domain and range can be found contextually from the problem, but also just using a little bit of common sense.